everyone. Um, I've been doing marketing for the Center for Accessible Technology, helping to build the Accessible Technology Coalition. My background is about 20 years in the disability arena in a lot of different forms, some years in education, some years in for-profit companies. I worked for 12 years for uh, IntelliTools and another year for attainment, and then the last uh, three years in the nonprofit sector. So it's been a great experience seeing all areas of uh, the disability world. Today we are talking about the iPad and communication transitions for young adults. This uh, slide shows my email address. Most of you probably have it because I've been communicating with you regarding this webinar, but you're welcome to uh, email me with any questions after the webinar. And I wanted to mention that I will be archiving this presentation and sending you out a follow-up email with a link to the recording as well as some follow-up materials. The Accessible Technology is the Coalition is funded by the uh, large grant from the California Emerging Technologies Fund. They were uh, granted stimulus monies to promote broadband access. And we, the Center for Accessible Technology applied for a grant to build this Accessible Technology Coalition to be able to provide training on assistive technology as well as accessible websites um, and things like that. And today's goals. So our first goal is to learn how the changing communication needs of young adults can impact the use of alternative augmentative communication devices. So when we talk about AAC, that's what that means. Um, any kind of device that's used for communication. And in this webinar, I'm not going to just focus on communication as far as um, communication between peers. I'm also going to expand it beyond that. So traditionally, there are several purposes of communication. One, to so socialize and interact with others. And our past iPad webinars have focused more around that socialization and using a device to talk for yourself. But in addition, communication involves exchanging information and making requests. As children age, that becomes more and more important, that they can not only communicate verbally, but that they can also communicate successfully in uh, written form, especially when we're talking about high school and then on into a work environment or into the university level. So communication takes on a whole new realm um, as far as not just the social, but also the education and the work environment. We're also going to uh, look at a variety of apps that are appropriate for 18 to 30 year olds in the iPad world. And I'm going to say that with a bit of a caveat because the iPad world is a one, the iPad app world is a wonderful world that is changing every day. <laughs> and that's one of the things I found out in doing a lot of this research is apps that were there a month ago, some of them are no longer there. Apps that are there today weren't there a month ago. And you can pretty much find any app that you want. I, it's just amazing what people are coming up with. So this world changes very quickly. I also found that in doing research, there was a lot of information about apps when the iPad first came out is in terms of special education and university level. And what I didn't find were a lot of blogs or websites that really talked about current use of what's been successful and what hasn't been successful. So I could read a lot about what's been successful a year ago, but not much more recent. So one of the things I wanted to talk about at the end was how we can maybe be maybe build a uh, place where we can discuss uh, successes in the iPad app world. I also want to invite you, as you're 
in the webinar to type your questions in the chat window or click on your microphone to ask a question. I also want to invite you to jot down your ideas on the whiteboard as we go through some of these apps. If you have experiences with them, you can write right on the slide screen. You have a, a bank of tools along the left that gives you a, a marker and a um, highlighter. So you're welcome to go in and, and draw, jot down your ideas as we go through. So some of the signs of successful communication integration for uh, young adults, especially those that students that may have been uh, nonverbal, completely nonverbal, are that they will develop independence in their communication. So they don't sit back and rely on somebody uh, asking them a question that they themselves are asking and expressing themselves. So they interact with others. They express themselves, and they become productive, active members of their school, work, and social environments. Transitioning to university or work can be a life changer for students. High school is uh, always a change because, and a challenge because of kids growing up and hormonal changes and figuring out who you are. But then there's the change of what do I do after high school. The iPad has been a great boon for this environment, moving up and becoming a young adult. And um, much of this information came from, on this slide, came from Karen Janowski. And I have her in my resources afterwards because she talks about, one of the great things is she talks about the coolness factor. So the iPad rates very high on the coolness factor. Suddenly you have a device that can be used for communication that doesn't set you apart from other students, actually makes you feel completely included in the uh, environment, in the social environment. It's also very lightweight. It's compact. You can get a whole range of mounts and covers for it to help secure it. It's absolutely cool. It's portable. Um, and it can be used for lots of different things. So years ago when I worked in the education and in special education, a communication device tended to be a separate device. So it was not part of the computer system. It was uh, not your pen and pencil. It was really a dedicated communication device. Nowadays, with the iPad, it is all, it is everything. It can be used for communication. It can be used for writing. It can be used for studying. It's just such a great invention. And what is equally as great is how creative people have become with uh, the iPad and creating the apps for the iPad. So let's start with talking about iPad and communication in social situations, kind of the traditional communication use of the iPad. So which apps are really appropriate for the older kids? There's lots and lots of communication apps out there. But um, I worked with Jennifer McDonald Pelletier, who you've probably listened to in previous iPad webinars. And we looked at which apps really are appropriate for that older child. Now I'm talking right now about an older, an, a young adult who is cognitively pretty on target. A little bit later, I'll show an app that's appropriate for kids that may have cognitive challenges. But in this webinar, I am talking about those uh, apps that are really full featured as far as communication goes. And by the way, I do want to mention that we have a lot of previous webinars or archives where we do talk about a huge range of apps that are appropriate for cognitively children that are more, that are, um, more challenged or younger in their communication needs. Oh, thanks, Jennifer. I'm glad you're, you got your speaker working. OK. So verbally is one of them. It has a very flexible screen. You'll notice at the top, it's got a bank of core words, 50 essential phrases and words. In the middle, there's a screen where whatever you type shows up, it's your typing window. And then the gray blocks along the right-hand side are where you have word prediction come up. So if I were to start typing a uh, word, I would get a choice of four word prediction items. And then down the bottom, you have a keyboard. It offers three different keyboard layouts. The QWERTY one that you see up there, a left-handed AB 
CD layout and a right-handed ABCD layout. So there's lots of flexibility there. A choice of male or female voices. And the uh, a very introductory level app that's that is pretty full featured is free. And then if you want to upgrade, um, it's $99.99. So it's a great app because you can try it out absolutely free of charge and then decide if you need something a little more full featured and purchase the, um, the, the for a fee based version. So this is a great one for individuals that um, pretty good spellers that can uh, type quickly. Also, using the word bank makes uh, increases your speed. Any questions about verbally or comments? Anybody use it? You can use your chat window. You can also take your pen and uh, write something on the screen. No, no. Uh, no thoughts on verbally. Uh, Jen's talked about verbally in the past. Okay. So next one is predictable. Another nice full featured app. Uh, what's great is it has a very intelligent word prediction program. So as you type, it actually learns the words you use most frequently and brings those up. So it raises the, the order of the word prediction. On the screen, you can see, as with verbally, there's a keyboard layout at the bottom. There's um, word prediction items show up in the middle, and then at the top is the screen uh, where your text actually gets created. And of course, in all these devices, you can speak whatever you've written on screen. There's um, predictable gives you a choice of four uh, US voices, but it also gives you a, f a choice of three British voices and two Australian voices. It is. Uh, um, Allow, it does allow you to score uh, to store quick phrases or prepared messages. So you have a bank of things that you can quickly refer to common phrases like, hi, how are you? Or hi, my name is Karen. Or hi, I use a communication device to talk. You can use it to compose and send emails. Uh, you can post to Facebook. You can send out a tweet. And we cannot. Um, undervalue the importance of giving students access to social media. We know that all of the kids love to communicate through uh, chat messages, through text messages on Facebook and on Twitter. And so an app like this makes it very, very easy for a child to compose a message and then post it. Um, the other interesting thing about this app is that you can actually write with your finger. Instead of using a keyboard, you can write on the screen, and it translates your handwriting into text. Now, I found that I had to be pretty careful about how I wrote. If I got a little sloppy or I tried to use cursive, it wouldn't necessarily read it very well. But it's kind of a nice feature for an alternate to using the keyboard layout. Also, it's switch accessible. So for those of you who are working with students that uh, don't have the fine motor to access the keyboard or handwrite, um, it does have switch access built in, um, both automatic scanning and as well as um, a user scan. And it works through Bluetooth switch box and Bluetooth switch or switches. So that's kind of exciting that they made it switch accessible. And it is a fee-based program. It's $159.99. By the way, I will send out this um, PowerPoint as a PDF and as a TXT file afterwards. So you'll have all these links so you can follow up and try these out for yourself and find them. Some of them were in the all of them are in the, of course, iTunes store, but I, some of them also had their own website with lots of information about the app. Locabulary is the third app that I wanted to talk about today in terms of communication. And it provides you access to inputting through a keyboard. And you'll notice that um, when you hit a key, it enlarges. So uh, vis uh, visually, it's a little bit easier to see what key you've hit. Um, so that's why the eye is a little larger than the others, because that's showing that that's the one that's been accessed. You can also um, 
pull up quick phrases. So there's two screenshots. One is a screenshot of the keyboard and the text field. The other is a screenshot that includes at the very bottom some quick keys. And so there is a one that says quick. If you go to the quick phrases, it brings up some common phrases like, hi, my name is Karen. So you can go back and forth between using quick phrases or typing out more elaborate messages. It also has a nearby mode, which I found very intriguing. And if you click that nearby button on the, top, on the bottom toolbar, it will search your location and find out things that are in the area, like restaurants, coffee shops, um, other gas stations, things like that. And what it does is it brings up a list of, allows you to bring up a list of common phrases that you might use in that kind of a location. For example, if I'm in a location where there's a Starbucks and I select Starbucks, it'll bring me up a menu of items that are traditionally in Starbucks. So I can do an, I can place an order very quickly. I can say I want a cafe latte with one click. So I found that really kind of a neat idea for a communication device and certainly appropriate for those older students and accessing communication. OK, my screen. I'm not sure if this window is blocking your screen there. I moved it down. So they have a free version. And then they also have an upgrade version that is uh, fee-based for $129.99. So the free version is called Vocabulary Lite, and the paid version is Vocabulary Pro. I had a hard time really telling what the difference was. I know that the Pro comes with more voices um, and maybe more programmable flexibility. But it's great to try it out because it is there is a free version. Anybody have any experiences with the Vocabulary? Anybody know the difference between the light and the pro that's on this? I don't see anybody writing, so I'll move on. You guys are hearing me OK, right? <laughs> so great. Thanks, Kate. So the, what I wanted to do, I, those are the three big communication apps that I found that were appropriate, really full functioning for young adults. There's probably more out there. Um, and certainly, we, can, uh, we need to get a dialogue going of what has been successful. But I also wanted to include those communication apps that are appropriate for individuals who are deaf and hard of hearing. Because traditionally, they're ability to communicate has been so dependent on someone who signs. Um, and it can be very limiting. And there are two interesting apps that I wanted to talk about. One is FaceTime. And FaceTime is a built-in iPad app. So it comes already on the iPad 2. And I think the iPad. You know, the iPad 2 because the iPad 2 has a camera and video capabilities, you can do video calling with Facebook via Wi-Fi access. So you can make video calls from your iPad 2 to another iPad 2, to an iPhone, an iPad Touch, or a Mac. Um, high quality video, so you can very clearly see hand gestures. You can see the, the signing as well as facial expressions. And it also lets you place and receive video relay, relay calls using services like the Z video relay service or the HO video relay service. The, this is absolutely free. Of course, you have to have Wi-Fi access. And then the next app is the Sorensen Video Center. And that's a free app that works with the Sorensen Video Relay Service. It's a, so it's a mobile version of the video Sorensen Video Phone. And I have a friend who uses the Sorensen Video Relay Service. And he was talking to me about the other day about the power of having the the iPhone and the video capability of the iPhone. 
um, to create a, a lot of independence in his life. So uh, he gave me a great example. He was driving to work and he got a flat tire on the freeway. So he safely pulled off the road. In the old days, he would have had to wait till someone stopped who could communicate for him or a friend. He could get a friend to come by who could um, communicate for him because he only communicated through sign language. But with his uh, video phone and the Sorensen relay service, he was able to call the relay oper operator. They, in turn, then called the towing service. Within a half an hour, the towing service was there. His car was towed. His tire was fixed, and he was on his way. So his ability to be completely independent was something that he just he loves it. it it's a great feature for him. If you're not are you all familiar with the Sorensen Video Relay Service? Can you give me a yes or a no? There's a little check feature above the list of participants. And so you can show, OK, Michelle is not. So let me talk a little bit about how these work. So you're given a uh, the Sorensen Video Relay Service. You're set up with a camera on your computer, and of course, then we can talk about the iPhone and the iPad because they have the camera built in. But the idea is you have a camera on your your computer. So you so when Taryn, who only signs, wants to call me, he makes a phone call to his uh, video relay services, and they are on video also, so they can see Taryn. So he signs to the operator. Then the operator calls me, and then she talks to me. I talk to her. She signs to Taryn. So we have someone who can give us immediate access. In the old days, you had to type into a um, mechanical device, and the operator had to read what you type and then read it out loud. This is quicker communication, easier communication. In addition, if Taryn wants to call family or friends who sign, he just calls them directly. The Sorensen Video Relay Service um, allows him to do that. So he calls them directly. They have a camera on their computer, and they can talk back and forth through signing. Now with the uh, video capabilities of the iPhone and now with the iPad, he can also do that with his phone or his iPad. So it absolutely opens up the wor world to complete independence. In addition, think about the fact that if you had to spend your life making confidential phone calls through an operator, that can be extremely difficult and extremely limiting. Now people who are deaf can actually make confidential phone calls directly to family and friends who also sign. So it's a uh, wonderful feature. And the iPad just integrates that whole thing. Yeah, it really is fantastic. Um, it absolutely is a, a, a life changer for many people and creates a lot of independence. So um, many of you will have an occasion to serve uh, students with, with uh, who are deaf or hard of hearing or in a library situation. I would imagine that this would be extremely helpful also if you have someone who's signing and you're having difficulty communicating. Potentially, you could work through that video relay service. Of course, someday I'd like to see an app where somebody could sign using their device and the app translates their sign into text right then and there. So we'll have to keep an eye out and see if anything comes up. If any of you know of such an app, uh, holler. <laughs> you can type it in the chat window. OK, so that's an overview of what we have in terms of communication for older students, young adults. Let's now talk about communication in higher education. It, we can also, this also applies to high school age students. So on the one hand, you've got communication for social needs. On the other hand, you've got communication where now you're in class and you've got to communicate with the teacher. Uh, many times in written form. So you've got to write your papers, you've got to draft reports, you've got to take tests. So communication is not just the social me talking to you. It's also communicating in a wide variety of forms. The iPad is great for that because 
It can allow students to communicate thoughts, ideas, concepts. It can allow them to communicate their knowledge on a, su a subject. It can be used for assignments, for test prep. It's also great because it um, gives the child a platform where they're not limited by the size of the paper or the lines on the page. I'm sure you've all worked with a child that, well, you know, I'm only going to write a one-page report because that's all the paper I have, or uh, the dog ate my homework, <laughs> or I lost my homework. Um, also, organization apps are perfect for children who have difficulty tracking assignments. Um, you can color code notes. Um, you can provide support for differentiated instruction through the iPad. So there's lots and lots of great features that we can use the iPad for to help students with, with learning. So let's start with talking about recording lectures. So children, lots of children have auditory processing difficulties and don't get everything when a, a teacher lectures. And, and many teachers still spend a lot of time lecturing. And so there's, I picked up two apps that I got great reviews. By the way, there's lots of apps out there. I tried to look at the ones that got great reviews, either on websites or in the review window in the iPad and the iTunes store, the App Store. So AudioNote is one of those. It combines the functionality of a notepad and a voice recorder. It can synchronize your notes with audio. Um, it also indexes your lectures. And the screenshot shows that. Here's an example of an index page where the student has uh, recorded several different lectures. And it's kept track, and they can go back and listen to their lectures. It also it has a pen mode, so you can actually draw pictures. So if you need a visual representation of a concept, you can drop that right into the audio note. And it costs $4.99. The other app that's a recorder is Quick Voice. And this one got probably the best uh, feedback that I read. Um, very popular voice recorder. And it can record ideas, voice memo memos, voicemail, lists meetings, classes. Uh, speaking of voicemail, let me just mention to go back to the Sorensen, uh, the video relay services. By the way, they do uh, record messages. You can access your messages. Either they record a signed message. The, re the relay operator either signs a message. So if you have video capabilities, you can watch the message, or it becomes a text message. Sorry, that was a little of a aside, but I wanted to mention that. OK. One of the fun things about Quick Voice is you can even record and create your own ringtones using this device. So that's a real clincher for some students. And you can record while using other apps. Some of the voice recorders, that was all you could do was use the voice recorder during the lecture. But this allows you to be running the recorder while you're meanwhile in another app taking notes or um, working on a project for students. And the screenshot shows the different uh, the list of different recordings that the student has. It also shows you know the large record and play buttons. And you can go back and select a previous recording and play it. One of the cool things about using an iPad as a voice recorder is you have so much more space. So my daughter is at uh, doing her prerequisites for the nursing program, and she uses a video recorder. She came home the other day and said. She was recording class, and she ran out of space. And so she had to negotiate with another student to get their recording. So the iPad, that's not a problem. It's not limited by the size of a small independent recorder. You're only limited by the, the amount of space on your hard drive. And Dragon for recording, Mary? Is that what you're asking? I know I did. Um, I will show Dragon dictation for. Um, drafting, but I haven't thought about it for recording lectures. That's an interesting it's an interesting application. Let's talk more about that when we get to the Dragon Dictation app. And feel free to jot down your notes in the chat window or draw on my screen. <laughs> I don't mind. 
Oh, by the way, Quick Voice is free, which is a nice feature of the program. OK, so on to mind mapping, organizing your work, taking your thoughts and turning them into a report. This has always been a struggle for students. You ask them to write a report, and they just have no idea even where to begin. Um, we're used, many of you have probably heard of inspiration. And I did find an app called Webspiration, but I didn't see a lot of reviews on how it worked. I did find uh, some good reviews on iThoughts, which is a mind mapping tool. So you can color code your thoughts, and you can reorganize, and you can create this mind mapping format that allows you to brainstorm. So what are, I have to write a report on cats. Well, the first thing I could do is start out just write out everything I know about cats. Then I can take all those ideas and begin to categorize them, pull them together. OK, some of the things I know about cats are what they eat. Other things I know are about behavior. Other things I know are about lifespan. And so using a program like iThoughts, you can brainstorm. You can have a visual representation of the information. And then you can take that brainstorming and turn it into an outline, and from that, write a report. And so um, it is $7.99. And again, was a great tool. So I tried to put this kind of in order. So the first thing you do is record the lecture. Then you take that and you start drafting your notes or taking that lecture and turning it into a report. And the next app I wanted to t talk about uh, is called Pages. So my daughter, Lena, the one that's in uh, school at, at uh, the Santa Rosa JC, she uses, she purchased Pages when she got her iPad because, of course, she didn't have Microsoft Word or Office. And Pages was only $9.99. It's turned out to be a phenomenal application for her. So she has some processing challenges. So what she does is she takes the recording and sits down with her iPad and Pages after the lecture. And she begins to translate the, she listens to the recording and drops her notes from what the teacher said into pages. While she's in the lecture, she can also, because she's got the iPad too, she can take pictures of what the teacher has on the screen. So while she's in the lecture, she's got her recorder sitting up front recording the lecture. But if the teacher puts up a chart or a graph or uh, puts notes up on the board, Lena can take a picture and grab that information. And then when she goes into pages, it's very, very easy to drop your pictures into your uh, notes. And because it's the iPad, you can resize the graphic. You can rotate the graphic just by uh, dragging with your fingers on the screen. All of you know about, if you've used an iPad, you know about that wonderful feature. If you've used any kind of the iPhones or the Droid Android phones, you can do that too. So what I think about is students who need are, are differentiated learners. They need information presented in multiple ways. So some of them are text-based learners. Some of them are visual learners. Some of them where they need graphics to support their learning process. Some of them are auditory learners where they learn, they do very well in a lecture environment. So a program like Pages lets them take all of that and drop it into the document. So it looks like, um, was it Mary who said you use pages quite a bit? And have you had good success with it? I've really been impressed with what they've done uh, with this app and how easy it is to use and how forward thinking it is. I think that's what's exciting for me. I mean, I remember the days when I was in school when everything was paper and pencil. And it's just so powerful to be able to gather your information and easily integrate what, every, what um, has been pr presented in a lecture. <laughs> Great. OK. And you know, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to even go there on the PC side, because this is an iPad um, presentation. 
Any questions about pages while I'm here or anything else that we've talked about so far? I'm kind of relying on you guys to holler in the chat window if or uh, click your talk button and, and uh, ask me a question out loud if I forget to stop. So the next app that I came across was in class. And this is great for tracking. So many of our students, children with uh, processing difficulties or children that have had traumatic brain injury, adults, young adults, need help with tracking assignments, tracking courses, tracking tasks. And iClass was one of those apps that has gotten good reviews. It can uh, remind students what's due that day. They can pull up assignments and sort them by date, by course, or by priority. It lets you take video notes, audio notes, and even photo notes. You've got a calendar view. You've got a daily task view. There's also another view where you can pull up uh, individual notes. And it's an absolutely free application. So this was one of the um, organizational tools that gets really, really great reviews. It was in the fours and the fives for the people that reviewed the app. Um, and as, we, as you know, an app that can flag a student when something's due. So send them a reminder the day before or the day of is absolutely necessary, even the week before, if it's a, a large report that's due, and help them to remember what tasks they need. Um, there was also some mention that it would even know, some of these apps would even know what class you're in. I couldn't figure out how that worked. But uh, the technology is really phenomenal that's out there. And then we're going to get to Dragon Dictation, which Mary has been talking about. So uh, for those of you that are familiar with Dragon, it's a speech to text application that traditionally is fairly expensive for uh, a, a computer-based system, for a desktop-based system. And what it does is I can talk and it will type. So I can draft emails with my voice. I can uh, do my Facebook apps with my voice. I can write reports with my voice. Uh, so for individuals who either struggle to access the computer because of a physical limitation or because of um, arthritis or because of um, um, what did I? Oh, um, the carpal tunnel syndrome. Dragon has been great. And they came out with a free app for the iPad, which is Dragon Dictation, and allows you to speak and instantly see your text as text or into email messages. You can also use it to post a Facebook, to post, to, tw to write a uh, tweet. And because it's free, I was very excited. Um, and so Mary says, does the user sign in? How would this work in a library with multiple users of the devices? One does, however, need to speak clearly and distinctly, I have found. And I would absolutely agree. Uh, Dragon is an app that uh, takes some work to get it to recognize your voice well. They have done some work on it. Dragon dictate maybe because it's free, doesn't have quite the flexibility in understanding people as easily. Um, but as far as um, how would it work in a library with multiple users of the devices, do you mean the problem of having it hearing other voices? And I would suggest using it with a headset, because the iPad, you can um, Use your um, iPhone headset or iPod headset with the iPad. And so you could speak into your iPad using your headset, and then it wouldn't pick up extraneous noise. Oh, and you mean the iClass app that it picks up extrane extraneous noise? 
Oh, that's interesting. In class, excuse me. That may very well be, because it's probably uh, sometimes the free apps don't have a lot of flexibility as 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 far as um, muting the background noise. So that's good feedback. Okay, so Dragon Dictation seems like an app because it's free. It's an app worth trying. And finally, as far as education goes, I wanted to talk about alternative access to books. So many students need support for when they're reading a book. Textbooks, um, books that have been assigned, fiction, nonfiction books that have been assigned for a course. And e-text can be very, very powerful. It can be read aloud to the student. Uh, um, good e-text programs allows you to change the font size, the color, even the style of the text. So um, if I need a larger font because of visual challenges, if I need um, visual issues where I need a gray background and black text or gray background and red text or yellow background, whatever it is, e-text programs will allow you to modify those settings. And they have good programs will have flexible reading options. So for example, some of the programs will highlight text. So you can have it highlight word by word, phrase by phrase, sentence by sentence, even paragraph by paragraph. It can also, uh, programs can slow the reading speed. So if I needed to hear it read more quickly or more slowly, I can adjust the reading speed. I can choose a variety of uh, voices. And some programs will even allow you to annotate the text on the screen. And so there are two uh, reading e-text programs I wanted to talk about. One is Newsstand, which is built into the iPad. And the benefit that I saw of this is that it allows you to access newspapers, magazines, and journals. And when you subscribe to a newspaper, magazine, or journal, it automatically downloads the latest uh, issue and drops it into this nice format that looks like a bookshelf. And then you can go in and read um, that uh, item as e-text. And it is free. I haven't used it yet, so I'm not sure what kind of reading options they offer. Ah, and... Uh, Mary says, there's also an iPad app for Bookshare, a website most schools have for audiobooks for students with disabilities. And I'm so glad you mentioned that, because that's my next slide. And you answered one of the questions I had, which is, I was not able to find on their website, I also sent a couple emails and haven't heard back, regarding whether or not there was an iPad app for Bookshare. So I'm glad to hear there is. And I wanted to mention Bookshare because it is an incredible program for accessing all types of books, including textbooks. It is free to students K-12 and post-secondary, students that qualify that have a print disability. And you have to provide proof. There's a variety of ways to provide proof of a print disability. Um, but it is free to those students. There's also membership that's free to all colleges and universities. I'm not sure about libraries, but um, that would be a cool thing. And oh, and Mary said, by the way, as far as the previous slide, she says, unfortunately, for the magazines, one must pay for the digital version, even if one subscribes to the print version. Oh, this is unfortunate. OK, so back to Bookshare. Public domain books can always be downloaded for free, regardless of whether you've qualified under the print disability. But books that are not in public domain uh, 
if you have a qualifying print disability, you can download those books for free. They're available in two formats, Braille, refreshable format, and DAISY. Um, and the cool thing is that as a professor or teacher, you can request that Bookshare makes your textbook accessible. They'll work with the publishers to request access. Uh, most publishers have gotten very good at allowing Bookshare to create an electronic version of their textbooks. There's still some holdouts, but they've had success over the years. They already have a bank of, uh, gosh, thousands and thousands of books that include textbooks. And you can search their website um, for those books. Um, but they're also open to uh, having you request that they make books accessible. Um, the, there's two apps that you can install for free to read their ebooks. One is Victor Reader Soft, and the other is Read Out Loud. I haven't had a lot of experience with Victor Reader Soft, but Read Out Loud provides lots of reading supports, lots of flexibility. Um, and I mentioned that changing the voice you use, changing the speed of the reading, highlighting the text as you read, and so lots of support for children that need that differentiated reading support. Oh, the Bookshare app is not an iTunes app, but appears on the Bookshare website. Thanks, Mary. I had a real hard time finding it on the website. Um, maybe afterwards you can email me the page. But I put the Bookshare website up there, www.bookshare.org. It seems to me I, a lot of schools don't know about it. Um, and there's a lot of. Uh, um, confusion around it. Um, for example, when I talked with Jennifer, she, she knew that the K-12 was free, but she didn't realize that the access for uh, university and college students was free. And that's what their website says. So it's an exciting app and worth exploring if you haven't heard of it before. OK. And then I wanted to turn, talk about Inkling. It's not one I've had experience with, but it's gotten some good reviews. And it sounds like a very intriguing app, because it turns textbooks into an interactive learning experience. It, there seems to be a lot of flexibility where you can download a single chapter of a textbook or the whole textbook. Um, it can integrate multimedia into a textbook, such as videos or 3D objects. It has a very simple user interface, and it provides interactive quizzes. So not only can you read the material in the textbook, but you can test yourself. So here's a screenshot of you know where traditional chapters along the left side of the screen, and then along the right, the kind of that multimedia support with charts and uh, links to videos and information. It's an absolutely free app. Um, I not sure how many textbooks they have available, though. But it would be an interesting app to have some of you try out in your environments and see uh, what you think of it. I love that idea that it would take a textbook and make it a really interactive. You know, once again, we're talking about children that need uh, multiple, mean, multiple means of representation of information. So it may not be enough to read the text on a page. They may need to see a graph, a chart. They may need to hear it read to them. And they may need to see videos. And finally, I wanted to talk about the iPad and communication for work. We, the iPad is very powerful in a work environment because of that ease of integration and in all environments. So it is such a flexible tool that it can integrate into the work environment for written communication, for um, verbal communication, expressing your ideas, expressing your knowledge. Um, you don't need a separate device. Uh, and I also wanted to mention that Everything I've covered before can, of course, be used in a work environment. And so I'm not going to reiterate all those apps that we've already covered, but everyone has application within the work environment. But I did pull out a couple uh, that I wanted to talk about specifically in terms of work. 
And one is the go talk because we're not, when we talk about a work environment, yes, we're talking about children that are cognitively at age level and grade level. But many of you have students that transition from a high school environment who may be cognitively challenged or cognitively delayed who are going into a work environment. And one of the communication tools that I really love is the go talk. Some of you may very well be uh, familiar with the handheld go talks well they've now got an iPad app that allows you to create a communication screen that can have anywhere from one key to 25 keys so for a child that has fine motor issues, you do fewer keys on the page. For a child that if fine motor is not an issue, then you can get those buttons up to 25 buttons. Um, you can bring in photos into your buttons. You can bring in um, uh, you know, digital images off the web. You can bring in um, graphics from your um, libraries. You can also uh, um, crop, scale, and rotate all these keys just using your finger, fingers, as you many of you are familiar with. You can customize the background. You can customize the text on a button. You can customize the size of the border. So the screenshot shows a layout for ordering at Subway. So if you've got a student that has, uh, that has difficulty speaking, or you have a child that has cognitive challenges, here's a great example of a use the go talk. So they go into a, their favorite restaurant and they can very easily order right using their iPad device. And you know, part of the iPad is it's not intimidating. Everybody recognizes it and they immediately feel comfortable with it. What I have seen in the past with cho children that use communication devices that are unusual is someone that is not familiar with individuals that have um, disabilities can be put off by this large device that they don't understand. Where the iPad, it's like, oh, I know what you're using. I understand it. Um, and you could also create for a child a layout that maybe is the steps in their job, a, a task analysis. So if you need to support them step by step through uh, job tasks, you can create an overlay to do that. You can create an overlay that says, uh, has, has phrases or sentence starters or choices of foods. What it's absolutely only limited by your imagination with this um, application. Um, and it is fee-based. It is $79.99 for this app. And let's see. I've got a couple of comments in the chat window. And I think it was Mary says that Read to Go is on iTunes for $19.99. But it's free if you download from the website once you're logged in. I'll have to go look into that. Patty says there was an episode on 60 Minutes on October 23, 2011, that showed something similar being used by autistic individuals. I recommend it. Ah, so Patty, maybe I can get you to email me a link to that. I'm going to write myself a note. I wonder if it was the Go Talk 10 23 11 episode on 60 Minutes. And while we're on the topic of students with autism, I haven't spoken specifically about those students, but many of those students' graphics are the key to their communication. They, they're graphic-based communicators. So taking a graphic and turning it into text for them is very powerful. I did find uh, that there are many videos on YouTube of students with autism using the iPad. Not many young adults. I saw more of the, the younger students. Um, but do you know search? And uh, so Patty says the story was called "Studying Autism and iPads." Great. And for a library situation, uh, an individual could create an overlay that had the library 
the the phrases that they'd like to ask the librarian. I need a book. You know, I uh, how do I get on the computer, and those kinds of things, and have a layout that's right there and ready for them to use. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, one of the cool things, you know, so often we think about a speech and language therapist or the AT specialist or the disability services provider creating these layouts for students. And I think one of the powerful things in my mind about the iPad is the student can also do their own creating. So with the, many of these programs, including a program like GoTalk, they can go in and create their own overlays and decide what phrases they need access, what quick phrases they need access to. So it's not reliant on someone who has fine motor coordination that can access the buttons and do the recording. The student can create their own layouts. So again, very, very independent access. And Kate, thank you. By the way, you can go up to your tools menu, and there's a selection to um, record. There's a way to save the chat. I'm trying to remember what it is, because now I've forgotten. But there is a way for you to save the chat window. I'm not going to spend time on it. And the recording, the archive I do, will show um, the chat window as we go through. OK. And I've got two more minutes. So the last screen is GigWalk. And this I wanted to talk about at, at the request of Jennifer McDonald Pelletier. As we were sitting down going through what apps she likes for young adults, she said, Karen, you've got to talk about GigWalk. Because when we talk about a work environment, GigWalk is a way for students to make money. Um, it's a program that uh, two entrepreneurs developed where an individual can work on the go. So a business or an organization wants some uh, review, feedback, there's a problem that they want input. And it, when you're out on the street, you can uh, post information about things that are at your location and potentially earn money. Oh, and thank you, Kate, by the way. File menu, save, chat. We'll save the chat as a TXT file. Thanks. Thank you, and Mary, too. OK, I'm getting off topic. So for example, the screenshot shows verify blocked road, and it'll give someone $4. So your um, iPad, of course, has a, uh, a GPS tracking device in it. And so you can go on and find out what's in your area where you could make some money. And then post the information they want. Post information about products, post information about businesses. This is an example of posting information about potential uh, traffic problems. You can generate multimedia content from a location, an event, or an experience. You can evaluate a service, a product, or a location. And companies, evidently, will pay for your feedback. So it's a great app for kids that are out on the go where they want to earn a little extra money. Uh, at, the website talks about it as your second job. <laughs> um, so it, it looks like a fun app <coughs> that uh, young adults would absolutely <coughs> really enjoy being part of. OK. So that's kind of a smattering of the apps that are on the web. Um, I have resources that I list that will be part of the follow-up material so you don't have to worry about jotting everything down. Um, but I'll, I wanted to uh, talk, mention the University of New Hampshire, the Disability Services. They put up <coughs> a review of iPad apps. I mentioned um, <coughs> Karen Janowski, who did early on in 2010, she did a review of iPad apps. And then I did find a couple of blogs. Um, also, 
in summary, there's an app for everything out there. I only touched on a very few apps of the thousands of apps that are available. And new apps are added regularly. Also keep in mind that apps will get taken down. There were a couple apps that got great reviews, and when I went to look for them, it indicated that the app had been taken off of the iTunes store. Not sure why, but things go up, and then sometimes things come down. And then I just wanted to put a bug in your ear to think about how could we create a format for giving each other feedback as we try out these apps. Because it's one of the things I didn't find a lot of was really current information on, yes, I've used this app with my students just the other day, and these are the things I liked about it, and these are the things I didn't like about it. Or in my library, these are the apps that the students, the young adults are coming in and using quite successfully. So I thought about, could, do people are on people on Twitter enough? Should we launch a blog post? So think about it, and if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. And you can send me an email at ksheehan at c4at.org, c-f-o-r-a-t dot org. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. And I will stick around for a few minutes if you have any comments or questions.